and welcome to my YouTube video. So today I'm going to be painting this lovely Siamese cat. But before I show you the time lapse video, I just wanted to have a few words about this painting. This is an example of a, um, a backlit object. So the sun is behind the cat. It's warm light. So remember the rule, warm light equals cool shadows. So the, the cat should be predominantly in the shadows. However, I've changed this a little bit as I want your point of focus to be on the face of the cat. So remembering the rule that warm comes forward and cool recedes, I've loaded that brown with cadmium red and cooled down the background around the cat's face. But I have kept the body in the shadows so then because that is in, in a cool area, I've gone and loaded the greens around the body with Indian yellow, cadmium yellow and cadmium red. But remember with all that warm in that grass, you still need to run some cool areas through it, not loads, but just some, just enough to break up all that warmth because if you don't, it will look muddy. So remember to do that. It's also worth remembering as well that if you feel that you are oversaturating your colours, if you mix the opposite colour with it, it will help to neutralise them. So for example, if you add like red to green, red will neutralise green. But in some of the yellow areas, I've used cadmium yellow straight out of the tube, which is not something that I usually do. But in order to get the warmth that I was after, I had to really load up that yellow. So I think now we'll we'll look at the time lapse video. Um, so this one is actually done on a canvas board. I had a little bit of trouble um, trying to get this in the right position. So I ended up having to balance it on a little ledge. So you'll just have to bear with me for this one. Hopefully you can see it well enough. My process for painting on canvas is very similar to on paper. You'll notice that a lot of, of my other paintings are on paper. So what I do is I like to give these boards a couple of extra coats of primer because I like the surface really quite smooth and I want to make sure that there's no absorbency issues because sometimes with canvas you can you can get a bit of absorbency so I always give them a bit of extra priming. And I start in exactly the same way of underpainting my canvas with raw sienna and turp so I've got that lovely warm um, sort of colour to start me off. I generally try and paint in four sittings however I have to say with canvas paintings sometimes it can be more generally on what I would call my layer three where most of my work is done and um, this one may be separated out because um, really it depends upon the painting also as well you don't have the issue of on paper stuff dries very very quickly so it's much easier to get it down and get it done quickly but on on canvas things dry much slower so I find it's a good idea to stop when you feel you're starting to lose your concentration because um, it can get quite sloppy and slidey on a canvas and you'll lose your painting very quickly so you know if, if you're going to split anything up, I would split up layer three if you feel that you can't do it all in one go. I should also mention as well that if you do a section which you feel is obviously wrong, like you've put the wrong colour down or something like that, the best thing is don't try and paint over the top of it. Scrape it back and do it again. So going back to my process then, my first layer is very quick. It's, it's about 20 minutes. The purpose of this layer really is to block in my shapes and to really give me a bit of a foundation to paint on top of. Focus on your drawing on this layer. I mean, if it's wrong, it doesn't matter how well you try and paint it, the animal is just going to look wrong. So really focus on getting your drawing right and blocking it in on this first layer. On my second layer, I try to get a bit closer to the tonal values that I think I'm looking at. And also, I'm trying to guess the temperatures as well. So, 
you'll find at this stage you're probably still quite a way out from what you're actually looking at your actual reference photo but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to work up gradually to what I think is something that accurately represents what I'm actually looking at. The problem I think if you go in straight away with really thick paint is that you don't really have anywhere to go if it all starts going wrong. And, um, you know, I mean, you can scrape it back, but ultimately what you'll end up doing is you'll end up losing the freshness of the painting. So I really think that working in a way of actually building up gradually to what you're looking at is a much more successful process than going in too much too hard and then trying to pull it back. Painting is very much a process to follow. You should know what you intend to do with your painting before you sit down. So you should have all things planned out. So for example, where am I going to put my soft edges? Where is my focal point going to be? Where am I going to put my thick paint? Where am, am I going to put my thin paint? All of these things have to be thought out and you need to arrive at your canvas knowing exactly what you're going to do. Because if you imagine, for example, like you were going to write an essay, say, for example, you just wrote it off the cuff with little research or planning, it's never going to be as good as someone who's done their research and their, pl and their planning. So you have to think of painting the same way. The best paintings that, the, that you see are always the ones where the person knows what they're going to do to it before they've sat down to actually paint it. So I would say that knowing the process is really important, understanding the process is important and then ultimately you can trust the process even when things start to go wrong, which they often do, trust me they really do, you'll be able to figure your, your way around it and around the problems because you'll have the process that you're sticking to to do. So as I said earlier, the third layer is where all the work is done. So at this point, I want to draw your attention to sort of the halo of light around the cat. So remember, light is warm. So you need to gradually work up to your whitest areas, which is what I've done in this painting. White is cool. So if you just put that halo in white, you will not achieve the warmth that you're after in this painting. So you need to bridge across to the white with oranges, Indian yellows, cadmium yellows, and then finally white you must resist the, the temptation to go just straight from your colour to white. Adding that bridging colour is really, really important, but you need to add the bridging colour, taking into consideration what you're bridging from. So, for example, if I'm bridging from red to white and I'm trying to create this warmth, I need to bridge orange yellow orange yellow then white if you just try and drag the white into your color such as the red what will happen is you will be left with something that looks really chalky you've got to bridge with chroma so as i said earlier the third layer may take up to two to three hours sometimes it can take even longer on canvas you've just got to go with it and and if you can't do it all in one go don't worry just split it up i often do this on canvas when i've lost my objectivity or my concentration's just gone you know it's it's much better just to put it down I tend to use a, a little bit of linseed oil on this layer as well. Not a lot, just a tiny, tiny amount just to make my paint a little bit pliable where needed. So your last layer then really is just your tweaking layer. Again, it's a very quick layer on canvas, maybe 20 minutes to an hour, depending upon the size of your canvas. But I'm just focusing on fixing bits I'm not doing anything major to the painting. I would have done that all in the middle section of 
the work. So I hope you have enjoyed my video today. Remember that painting, it is hard and with practice you really can improve no matter what level that you're at. So keep painting and I'll see you for next week's video.